So, a few months ago, I was browsing the Unity subreddit for some inspiration when I came across a post that I found to be extremely cool. Someone had created a planet that would increase in resolution the closer you got to it, allowing you to add a lot more detail to the terrain. I thought, hey, I can do that. And after trying, failing and trying again, I finally managed to get it to work. It's by no means complete and could use a lot of improvements, but what I'm going to show you today is the basic foundation for what I saw in that post. If you know how to improve it, please do! And it would be extremely kind of you if you would post it in the comments too, since I and many others would love to know how you did it. I'm also going to try to improve myself of course, but I thought that I would make the center kind of a video series instead of making one gigantic video that will be coming out god knows when. Also, this is not a tutorial, but more of an educational video documenting how I came up with my solution for this challenge. Out of my basic terrain generation code is copied from Sebastian Lake's series on procedural planets. It's awesome and you should totally check it out, but it lacks any level of detail system. LOD and that's what I've been trying to create. So I'm mixing my code with his, trying to bring you the best possible information that I possibly can. I won't be explaining his code in detail, since he does that perfectly himself, but I will of course explain mine. Here, in the planet script for example, I've created a new public static variable called size and one called player. These can be implemented in better ways, but since they aren't the focus of this video, I thought it would be unnecessary. The size should be equal to the size that you set for the planet in the inspector. If not, everything will break. And the player transform is, as you might have guessed, a reference to the player's transform. Then comes a dictionary containing hard-coded detail levels for the planet. The first value, the int, is the detail level that should be applied when the player is a certain distance away from the planet's surface, given by the second value, the float. So for instance, when the player is less than 60 units away from the planet's surface, the detail level should be at level 1, and when the player is less than 25 units away, the detail level should be at 2. All these values can be changed but finding what values work the best can be a bit tricky. Now we can move on to the fun stuff. So the main thing that separates what I've done from what Sebastian did is of course the LOD system, which works using something called a quad tree. A quad tree is basically a data structure that I use to only gather data that I need, meaning that the code is more performant. Let's imagine a square. This square will represent one side of a cube. To start, I divide this square into four new squares. Now we have four squares, or quads if you will, of which four are visible. We see that the four new quads are children of the first quad. To the right is the data structure visualized as a node tree. We have the parent at the top with its four children below. The first node has a detail level of 0, and its children have a detail level of 1. Let's look at the detail levels that I had defined and see if any child should have a higher detail level than it already has. Ok, looks like the bottom two quads should have a detail level of 3. That means that we need to divide them too. Now, we have 8 new child quads. Take a look at the node tree to see how they fit in the structure. Notice that they have a detail level of 2. Let's run that check again. Looks like these 4 quads should have a detail level of 3, while the ones around them should stay at their detail level. Finally, let's divide them into 16 new quads. Now, 
Let's imagine that the player stood right here. The player can't see too far into the distance, so he barely notices that the quads are at the top of very little detail. The quads near him are so much smaller in detail, which makes him believe that the whole planet looks like what's around him. He has almost the same experience as if we would have made the whole planet high res, but with the added benefit of improved performance. Now that you know how to do it in theory, let's show you how to do it in practice. And just so you know, I sometimes use the word chunk instead of node or quad, because it describes the end usage better. The initial quad in our example is represented by a terrain face. As Sebastian explains in his video, this is basically one side of a cube that we will later inflate into a sphere by normalizing the vertices' positions. In my method called construct tree, we take the parameters of the terrain face and use it as our parent node in the quad tree. We save a reference to the parent node which is of the class chunk, and hence my variable is called parent chunk. Using this reference, we call the method generate children. Generate children is a method inside of the chunk class that we can use to, you guessed it, generate children of the chunk. It's important to note that this only happens if the distance from the player to the chunk once inflated warrants a higher detail level than what is currently applied. You can think of this uh, first part of the method as creating four new nodes in the node tree. But then, we do something quite neat. We call the generate children method on the new children too. This is just like when we divided the child quads in the quad tree earlier. This process continues until all chunks are satisfied with their detail level. Let's go back to the construct tree method for a second. Here we retrieve the important information about the chunks that we need by looping through the chunks return by calling get visible children on the parent chunk. The get visible children method loops through all the chunks children, and then its grandchildren, and then its grandchildren's children, and so on until it reaches a chunk without any children. This is what we would call a leaf in a node tree. If we find one of these leaves, we add them to the to be rendered list that we define at the top of the method. When all leaves are found, we return the list. Back at the construct tree method, we now want to know more about the vertices and triangles of the leaves. But there's a problem. We haven't defined the vertices and triangles. Let's do that using a method called calculate vertices and triangles. This method uses almost exclusively code from Sebastian Lake, but I have done some tweaking when it comes to where exactly the vertices are placed. Take a look at this line of code for example. An important modification that I made was letting the radius of the current chunk determine its position, meaning the smaller the chunks could fit in smaller spaces. I also incorporated a variable called position that stores the center of the chunk before inflation. This position was set during the creation of the chunk back in the generate children method, exactly right here. Again, the radius is used to get the right position. In the calculate vertices and triangles method, I've also changed a little of the triangles generation. Since the chunk will exist within a larger mesh, the indices will need to be adjusted to correlate with the position of the vertices in the large vertices list. This is done using a variable called the triangle offset that are increment by the number of new vertices at the end of each iteration of the loop. At the end of the method, I return the vertices and triangles in a tuple, which I found to be very useful when storing correlated data of different types. I could of course create a class for this, but I think that that would be a little overkill for such a small simple little thing. Now, for the last time, let's jump back to the construct tree method. After we've calculated the vertices and triangles positions, it's time to add them to the large vertices and triangles lists. Lastly, we clear the mesh, input its new configurations, 
and recalculate the normals. Given that the player is connected, the radius is correct and the detail levels are defined correctly, this should all be working. Hopefully you got a bit of insight into how this can be achieved and are now ready to start working on something similar yourself. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments down below. I know that this stuff is very difficult to comprehend and trust me, it's difficult to explain too. Speaking of explaining, if you want to know more about the things that I didn't explain in this video, like the terrain generation, please check out Sebastian's series. It covers a lot of cool stuff and I couldn't recommend it more. But I think that marks the end of this video. Give it a thumbs up if you like and maybe a thumbs down if you think it deserves it. I'm always ready to improve so again if you have any suggestions put them in the comments down below. Goodbye.